America! My whole goal with this episode was to just shoot off as many guns as possible to see if I needed a gun or if I wanted a gun, if I wanted the responsibility of a gun. Who's been buying a lot of guns, would you say? Everybody? Yeah, everybody. everybody. <laughs> Holy shit. If you're gonna talk shit about it, right. you better put your hand on one and actually go use it. Gun ownership is not just old white men's club. A grandmother is not the person I'd expect to have a gun. You would be surprised how many grandmothers have firearms. That's zen for you. Yes. The American zen. Do you think I should get a gun? I can't answer that question. Okay. We'll, we'll walk off, we'll get a shot of us walking off with these old badass like. Probably, I think I look like an idiot, but uh, <laughs> you look cool. Our doomsday preppers write the break of a worldwide mysterious monsters have been appearing. Gun taxes have been sinister to California. As clickbait headlines warp our view of the world, I'm spiraling down the rabbit hole looking for the truth. On this episode, guns. Firearm sales are soaring across the U.S., putting gun stores on track for a record year. Reports say many gun sales are from first-time buyers. Experts say last year's increase is a mixed result of a presidential election year, social unrest, and anti-Asian sentiment. There's been a lot of news reports on increasing gun sales. Guns seem to be everywhere these days. While the exact numbers are hard to come by, it's estimated that American civilians own more than 393 million guns. So if 100 Americans were in a room, 120 guns would be strapped in somewhere there too. I don't own a gun, and I've been feeling both a little bit of FOMO and a little defenseless. So I drove out to Jimmy's Sports Shop on Long Island to get some advice on a first-time gun. I'm looking into, you know, buying a gun. I've been reading about a lot of people buying guns. What's a good, like, starter gun, would you say? Maybe we can show you some shotguns yeah, first. Yeah, show me some All shotguns. Right, pump action, pretty basic. This one holds 14 bullets or 16. Wow. You can shoot two times. One, two. This gun was so popular during the pandemic. You can feel this one, too. Okay, all right. This, this looks one, like something from Batman, to be honest this with one, you. This one is not legal in New York City, but it's okay in New York State. Is this real? It's a sniper. Okay. Yeah, it's a 50 caliber bolt action. This is the largest cartridge you can have in a rifle, I would say. Anything bigger than this, you'd probably call it something different, maybe a cannon or stuff like that. I can have this in New York City? As long as you have a New York City rifle and shotgun permit. I don't know if this would fit in my apartment, but... Maybe you should get another bigger apartment. That's right, I get to match my big gun. What's, what's this one here? This one kind of looks out of place here. I think it's a single shot 22. Can I see that guy? No, that? you cannot. I in can't New see York that State, one. You know, oh, you cannot, okay. have, you cannot like, touch or shoot a pistol without a pistol license. Wow, okay. That would fit in my apartment, for sure. Could I take a gun home today with me? No, you cannot. If you live in the fire barrels of New York City, you have to have a New York City rifle and shotgun permit. I can't just say like, hey, I want that one right there and walk out with it today. You it's cannot. Take, how long would it take me to like... Uh... About a year right now. A year, wow. Yeah. Have you been seeing a lot of first-time gun owners come in? Yeah, since uh, the beginning of COVID, yes, a lot. There was lines, people were waiting like hours. So your shelves were kind of like, they, they were... It was empty. Ammos were empty, BB guns was empty. Who's been buying uh, a lot of guns, would you say? Everybody. Yeah, everybody. everybody. Yeah. But since person, former President Trump says like uh, Chinese viral, Asian virus, stuff like that, mm -hmm. then Asian people were getting targeted. Then more Asian people are coming to buy guns or self-defense stuff. I was like the first Chinese person who does this job in New York. And since we are here, we existed, then we can educate those minority group and they don't even speak the language. So without me, they can't even get the license. I, I guarantee you that. What about firearms is interesting to you? Um, they look good. They have good looks, man. Yeah. I like good looking stuff. When you go to most other gun stores, you probably see more of this type of weapons. These kind of older looking guns. Yeah. This is like millennial guns, yeah. boomer guns. Yes. Also, I think it's first, it's your right. You know, it's every good citizen's right to own a firearm in the United States. If you have a right, why don't you use it? It's my right in the Constitution as an American to own a gun. But what does that mean? There's this fundamental tension at the beginning of American constitutional history between those who favor sort of more power in the states and those who favor a stronger central government. Uh, I've seen that uh, Ham Hamilton musical. <laughs> 
According to Saul Cornell, the Second Amendment was created as a response to the untested federal government by maintaining a local state-run force that could pull the ejection handle as a final check on tyranny if things were to run amok. Their Second Amendment doesn't fit our categories. The Second Amendment that history gave us, in a way, is both a nightmare for gun control people today and gun rights people. You know, on the one hand, you have originalists who say that the meaning was sort of locked and loaded, perhaps. You have living constitution people. On the other side, you said, you know, it's a living, breathing document. And then you have the vast majority of people who are somewhere in the middle who says, well, we wrote a principle into that document, but how we apply that principle to a different set of facts is much more of an open question than people like to admit. It feels like it's gotten increasingly more polarizing to talk about guns, especially in the media. I found this out pretty quickly in some of the emails I got back from potential subjects. Yeah, the elephant in the room right off the bat is Vice being a more left-leaning show. The date 9-11, 2021 is also a sensitive date. I don't see how I, what I'm doing is any less patriotic than if you were to go to a gun range on September 11th. Our owner has expressed immense concern over your segment. In fact, I think it's more patriotic because I'm using my First Amendment right to cover the Second Amendment. He doesn't trust news media. I mean, I'm like using two in one. It left me apprehensive, not wanting to end up as part of a chop edited anti-gun piece. Eventually, I was able to convince the Black Gun Owners Association of Jacksonville to meet with me. Florida has much more lenient laws towards guns than New York does, so that's why I decided to come down here, not to the Wild West, no, no, but to the Wild Southeast. As members from the Black Gun Owners Association started to come in, I thought about how this group was not what I considered to be the stereotypical group of gun owners. While white men are typically the stereotype, and indeed statistically are more likely to own a firearm, the black community isn't that far behind them, and black gun ownership has soared during the pandemic, increasing by almost 60%. We don't really hear about a lot of black owners. Why is that? It's taboo for a lot of black people to own guns. It's always being portrayed in a negative manner. We want to conflict that. We want to make sure that we are showing black gun ownership in a proper manner, which we go about that with education. Just being more educated on how to protect yourself and what that means. And does everybody carry all the time, sometimes, every day? Every day, all day. I was a bus rider for almost 12 years. And sometimes I would have to be out late at night. Sometimes I wouldn't get home to 10.30, almost 11 o'clock. So just to make sure that I was able to protect myself if I had to, I went on ahead and trained and purchased a firearm. Defense seemed to be the motivating factor for members of the gun club to have a firearm. And while I had shot a pistol before, I never received much formal training. So I asked Chanel for a proper demo. So remember, always keep your finger off the trigger until so you're ready to use it. Keep your firearm unloaded until you're ready to use it. All right, you're gonna make sure that your rear sight and your front sight are aligned. Inhale, exhale, pause. That's the sausalies, what you're doing there, but just bring it in just a little bit. So I'm now I'm gonna tell good. you, you're holding it tight because I can see I know, I'm relax. nervous. Yeah, relax this okay. thing. It is now loaded. Okay. And set the trigger pull. If we're just with our middle. All right, don't look like you hit anything. All right, lay it down. Okay, I don't think I hit anything. You didn't. <laughs> mm -mm. You didn't. So I'm not a great shot. I also don't own a gun, so give me a break. I did, however, start to think about all the people who bought their first gun during the pandemic, potentially without any training. Have you had a lot of folks since the pandemic started asking for help and assistance? Oh, most definitely. Um, you know, <laughs> right, right, right prior to the pandemic, um, you know, they, they, before the pandemic, you know, it was a lot of people starting to buy firearms. You're having people buying firearms that aren't fully trained. That's unacceptable. But in order to get your concealed carry, you have to have some proper training. You have to be able to take this certification and say, hey, I sat down in this class for this many hours. Recently, I trained with two young ladies. Both of them had their concealed carry. Both of them owned firearms. Neither one of them knew how to shoot them. I had to show them how to load the magazine. I had to show them every single part of that firearm. So just think about, they have concealed carry yeah, they license. Carry. They so they, carry yeah, they can carry it, but they don't know how to use it. So think about it, all the people out here that purchase firearms that have no idea how to use it. 
The sinking feeling I felt at this moment didn't last long. I finally hit the damn target out on the range, and all my worries seemed to melt away. Finger off the trigger. Finger off the trigger. You get it. I guess my whole body was, uh, that's it. Yeah, I'm in the red. I'm yeah. It's fun. This is a, there's a fun element to this, right? It's, it's absolutely a fun element, but it's a, it is a very serious oh, yeah. hobby. Yeah. So it's not always, Oh yeah. you know, it's relaxed. It's having fun. You know, just like if we were going out shooting pool, you know, it's serious when we're shooting. Right. But when my shot is over, Hey, what's yeah, up? Good shot. That's yeah. fun. All right. You owe me five bucks. Exactly. Exactly. As my afternoon of training continued, I became more comfortable with the gun. I started to think about the fun, hobbyist side of American gun culture. I met up with Adam Johnson, who runs the NFA Review YouTube and Patreon channels. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the NFA Review channel. Adam has become one of the go-to people online for creating content about silencers. Your suppressor. The suppressor she told you not to worry about and cultivated a community of gun enthusiasts who come to his organized annual events where they have a chance to try out new guns and even a flamethrower. As part of this episode, I wanted to shoot off as many guns as possible. With Adam having such a significant collection, I thought this would be a good match. Even after seeing his channel, however, I wasn't quite prepared to see his gun safe. Let's cover this. <laughs> Don't need 15 million subscribers seeing my safe code, huh? <laughs> we'll cover that up. Holy shit. Holy shit. Yeah. This is like some bond closet. Yeah, I'm out of room. Do you know how many you um, have in here? 86 guns and 72 silencers, I think. Wow. I mean, I honestly didn't know much about suppressors before mm -hmm. I started looking into your channel. I kind of had this per perception that they're controversial. Right, um, because be of Hollywood. Because of Hollywood, yeah, they're always they in don't. assassin yeah. films, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're shooting with a suppressor, you're removing 30% of the recoil, muzzle flash, and of course the sound. It actually makes shooting really enjoyable, especially for new shooters. You have a favorite suppressor? I mean, you you, you said you have, I have a couple of favorite guns. <laughs> okay, let's see some favorite guns. So these are from Cabot. I'm gonna check that sucker okay. out. Okay, so, wow, holy shit, it's so got some weight to it That as well. is a 45 with a threaded barrel and a uh, sight on top, and that is the Damascus that you're looking at there. Wow, there's really some craftsmanship in uh, here, yeah? That gun's all hand fit. I'm, that's cream of the crop. So for you, like, you know, we were driving in here, there's a security guard we had to go through. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw there's a cop down the street. So this isn't really a security issue for Security's you. Security's a secondary. Okay. It's just something that I've always been interested in, the mechanics and how the parts all interacted with each other. I asked Adam to take out as many guns as he could put on the table. As a film buff, I noticed how many guns I recognized from popular movies. We, I mean, we could do all We could go down. Bond movie, we got um, the Snatch. Leon the Professional. Leon the Professional. What do you think about, uh, you know, the American culture, guns Guns are... Uh... They're part of us. It's, it's just part of our makeup, our yeah. country makeup. We are free because of them. Mm -hmm. Whether you like them or not, you don't have to like them. Just don't tell me that I can't have them. Gun control is an uphill battle on ice skates. It's not gonna happen. Do you know anybody who's got more guns than this? Oh yeah. They're fun. They're fun. All right, let's go shoot some guns. Let's okay. put these away and we'll pack them up. Let's get to the fun All right. part. Let's get to it. Doesn't this get exhausting to like load it's all this stuff? It's super exhausting. That's why I bring gun, you load it. Okay. All right. So basically this is a five round loader. Okay. You put five rounds in and then you Okay, so it's it gonna take me 20 them. of those times to Correct. And good luck to you, sir. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, oi, oi. Oh, fuck. What'd you do, drop around? Hold on, let me see this. So do like nose first, and then okay. just rock it in. Do you ever pay an intern to just do this for you? After loading up some rounds, I took Adam up on his claim that suppressors make shooting more enjoyable. Steel? Not that oh, loud. No, it's not that loud at all. Okay. You are ready to fire. And in the safety's off? The safety's off. Okay. That is a light trigger. Okay. So don't put your finger on it until you're ready to shoot. Boom. Did I get him? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I mean, even compared to this 22 I was shooting yesterday, it still feels like uh, It helps with recoil, man. Yeah. We spent the afternoon living out my wish to fire off as many guns as possible.
Jesus. America. Right? America. How fun was that? It's <laughs> pretty <really> fucking fun. <laughs> I definitely understood the fun element of shooting. And while I hated to ruin a good time at the range, I did have to push Adam a little bit on the politics of guns. Most of the gun owners that I talk to are about safety. But like yeah. in this country, you know, if I want to go get a gun right now, I don't need to take a safety course. We have rules set in place that state what you can and cannot do, and it's mm -hmm. the Second Amendment. Yeah. So, so that's the thing. It's that's just, the thing. That's the thing. That's okay. it. Okay. It is. It is your right as an American. Okay. We both have the right to vote, right, as American citizens, like guaranteed. You still have to register to vote, right? right. But, and I'm not saying you need to register your firearm, per right. se, because... But you still have to do a background check when you buy it. Okay. Unless you do a private sale. Unless you do a private sale, but, it, but that first gun was checked mm -hmm. by somebody. Mm -hmm. You're not selling guns out of the trunk <laughs> in the ghetto. You know what I mean? You, uh, could you not, Guns that end up in the ghetto were stolen. Okay. Or, okay. Or they're purchased via straw purchase. What's a straw purchase? So that's where a felon asks a non-felon, typically a girlfriend, to go in and buy a certain gun that he gave her cash for. That's okay. called a straw purchase and it is, I believe, a felony. Yeah. Do you think that the amount of regulation that are, exists with firearms is- We have way too much regulation. Too much on. regulation. Way too much. What would you like to see uh, done away with? Just Mental yeah. illness needs to be tackled. It's, it's guns aren't the problem. Mm -hmm. We don't need to be regulating these things. They okay. have plenty of regulations already on the books on them that are probably never gonna come off. Mm -hmm. We need mental illness reform, not gun reform. Mental illness is a problem. Yeah, and I mean, there's a violence problem in, in this there's country. There's a violence problem. There always has been since the beginning of time, though. This yeah. is nothing new. Humans have killed each other since the beginning of time. Yeah. But did you think they could kill each other easier now than like, uh, you know? I like don't know. I mean, back then, would you imagine having your head lopped off with a sword <laughs> or smashed in the face with a mace? Yeah, pretty brutal. Pretty, pretty brutal, brutal stuff. Yeah. yeah. Not stitched up as easily as this. Yeah. Speaking of stitching, you want to stitch up some targets? Sure, we could get back to it. I yeah. just had to ask those yeah, questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's do. Uh, all right, let's do. Let's, I've never shot off some machine guns. Whatever you want. Do the MP5. Sure, let's do it. All right. <laughs> Adam seemed a little reluctant to get into the issues with me, and I don't blame him. For Adam, a law-abiding citizen who generates a second living from firearms, the politics surrounding guns can be frustrating. Every mass shooting in the United States seems to once again bring up the debate about what to do with guns. And even though the mass majority of gun deaths in the country come from suicides, the trauma and magnitude of mass shootings generate most of the media coverage, leaving other issues relating to gun violence unresolved. I wanted to talk to a gun owner about gun policy and what to do about it. So I found an unlikely candidate, the chapter president of the Florida Liberal Gun Club. What do we got back here? You got all your stuff here? Oh, what are yeah. we shooting today? Oh, let's see, I've got a 22 LR pistol right here. I've got my 22 rifle and my 3030 lever action. Do you conceal carry as well? Or are you, I uh, do conceal carry as well. This is what I usually use when I, this is my conceal carry. Kind of <laughs> put this in my, you know. That was a bad joke. We don't, we can cut that one from there. <laughs> After shooting off so many guns with Adam, the novelty had somewhat worn off by this point. So you're part of the liberal gun club. That yes. is, I, uh, you know, <laughs> it, that doesn't seem like it would be a thing. <laughs> It is. Uh, we've actually got several thousand members. How liberal are you, would you say? Are you like, a, are you a Democrat? Um, are you a Bernie guy? Are you a, you know, are you a Marxist? Like, I would say I'm more of a social Democrat. Do you vote Democrat then? You most don't have to tell time, me who you vote for as well. Most of the time I do, but I'm okay. not restricted. As Mike explained his politics, I thought about this clip of Beto O'Rourke during the Democratic presidential debate in 2019. Hell yes, we're gonna take your AR-15, your AK-47. We're not gonna allow it to be used against our fellow Americans anymore. But how do you kind of reconcile that? There was a very big shudder that went down my spine when he said that. <laughs> Everyone kind of felt the same way that I know of. They were kind of like, yeah, he's done. Yeah. He, he's not gonna make it. So, you know, a lot of liberals would say, oh, you don't need to have an AR-15. Yeah, nobody needs this. It's a military-grade weapon. And you would say... Oh, they're right. You don't need it. But that doesn't mean I can't have it. Okay. <laughs> so even though you agree that you probably don't need this, it's right. still fun. Yeah. The law says you can have it, and therefore you're going to take full damn advantage because if you're not, somebody else is going to do that for you. Yeah, why not? <laughs> All right. All right, Mike. All right. You're the Liberal Gun Club president. I'm just asking questions here. Uh, just Florida chapter. Yeah, just Florida chapter. Once again, I asked for a proper lesson, this time on how to hold an AR-15. When you feel you're ready, yeah. move your finger down to the trigger. Okay. And you're going to want to put it right in between your first two joints. Hold. Okay. 
Okay, where are you aiming at? I was aiming for the head. Don't aim for the head. Okay. Aim center mass. Center mass is easier to hit than the head. Okay, was I hitting anything? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I still wasn't a good shot. That was the only one I hit. Yeah. Um, but I could see your groupings. I imagine these are your groupings. And you know, for a liberal, you're a pretty good shot, so. <laughs> While Mike broke the stereotype that liberals couldn't shoot, I was still a little confused in how he could be a liberal and pro-gun. Certainly, he must be pro-gun control. A lot of gun control that they're wanting to do isn't gonna work in a realistic sense. So instead of trying to just be blanket of, you know, let's ban all, everything, let's look at this and say, hey, where do we need to focus on how to resolve this issue? And that's where I think the implementation of root cause mitigation will come into place. The Liberal Gun Club believes in promoting solutions based on what they call root cause mitigation to tackle the source of the problem with progressive policies like improved healthcare, destigmatization of health, of mental health for people who might be having issues with suicide. Here's resources for that. Criminal gun violence, that's a totally different subject and that's more based on socioeconomic issues. You know, you don't see a lot of violent crime amongst the upper class, wealthy classes. You tend to find that more amongst the working poor, poverty level because people see that as a way to make money because the other options open to them don't pay enough. Trying to figure out how can we resolve this issue before it ever gets to the point of somebody picking up a gun and doing something violent with it. This documentary is not going to solve the gun or violence debates, but I really tried to explore the nuances of owning a gun. Ultimately, I've decided to pass on getting one at the moment because I don't know if I can bear the minimum responsibility I think is necessary for gun ownership. Things like keeping it secure and finding time to properly train. Even if this is my own moral standing, this sounds like work to me. As far as the gun debate in the US goes, it seems unlikely that guns are going anywhere except off the shelves. They're far too ingrained in American culture, for better or for worse. But we have to try and bridge the gap in understanding to reduce gun violence deaths in our communities. And that goes for every side of the conversation. The gun debate in America serves as a proxy for almost everything but guns. Guns become this overloaded material object that's carrying weight that no material object could possibly carry. And that has complicated things. I love The Rock, like one of my favorite yeah. films. Like, And you know, I had uh, toy guns as a kid. Do your best Sean Connery impression. Um, um, from uh, yeah. lo losers whine about do uh, losers whine about doing their best. Winners fuck the prom queen. <laughs> That's it. There you go. That's good. That's good. That's, that's better than I can do.